Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. I went to see the movie 1917 the other night. It was a great movie and showed how governments are willing to sacrifice millions of lives in order to accomplish nothing. But this video is about government hiding the extreme weather of 1913. We don't have to guess what the climate was like at lower levels of carbon dioxide because we have lots of historical data to show us exactly what the climate was like at lower levels of carbon dioxide. However, when the historical data doesn't match the climate models, then the historical data has to change. On July 10, 1913, Greenland Ranch, California reached 134 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 57 degrees Celsius, the world's record. Temperatures during the week from July 8th to July 14th, 1913 were 128, 129, 134, 129, 130, 131, and 127. This hot spell was completely unprecedented in the United States or any place else in the world. The United States has never come close to that sort of week again. The heat during the summer of 1913 was incredible. Nebraska recorded temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit every day but one from August 1st to September 7th, 1913. During the 1910s, the percent of summer days above 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the United States was about 50% higher than it was during the past decade. And the same story with 90 degree days. Across the United States, the percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit during the summer of 1913 was in the top 10 on record. Nearly 40% of days during the summer of 1913 were above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Compare that to about 25% last year. The average maximum temperature during the summer of 1913 was also one of the highest on record. This shouldn't be surprising given the record heat in California and Nebraska. Now I'm going to show you how NOAA tampers with the data to erase the heat of 1913. This is the adjusted data. They cooled the past way down and warmed the present way up. By tampering with the data, NOAA turned the mild recent summers we've been having into much hotter summers than the very hot summers of the 1910s and 1920s. This is the raw data which shows cooling, and this is the tampered data which shows lots of warming. This is not science which they're doing. They're rewriting history and committing fraud. Lots of people died in the heat in the Midwest during the summer of 1913, and it had nothing to do with faulty thermometers. But the heat was just one part of the climate problems of 1913. This was the front page of the Washington Post on March 27, 1913. Flood, flames, famine spread a pall of horror over cities of misery and suffering. Half a million people in need of food, shelter, and protection from pestilence, but destruction of railroads retards relief. The Baltimore Sun, cold and hunger add to the terrors of the flood. Harrisburg Telegraph, Great floods spread to Pennsylvania with many persons reported dead. Ohio refugees suffering from severe cold and are threatened by starvation. Dayton at fire's mercy. Bitter cold adds horror. This wasn't some modern horror movie. This was real life in the United States in 1913 with carbon dioxide levels very low. And if all this wasn't bad enough, there were massive tornadoes. Much of Omaha, Nebraska was destroyed by a tornado and more than 300 people were killed. It was described as the greatest cataclysm in American history. The uncontrollable forces of nature, the devastation of Omaha, the trail of the tornado, the flood horrors death list in Ohio and Indiana, the grim reaper cuts a wider swath. Thus we pause to reflect on the most staggering and tragic cataclysm of nature that has been visited upon our country since we first won it from the Indian. The unprecedented succession of tornadoes, floods, storms, and blizzards, which in March 1913 devastated vast areas of territory in Ohio, Indiana, Nebraska, and a dozen other states, and which were followed fast by the ravages of fire, famine, and disease. This was the flooding in Ohio. This was the flooding in New York. This was a tornado in Indiana. This was the tornado in Omaha. This person was found in the twisted wreckage of a tree after the tornado. Tornadoes went from coast to coast that day. And at the end of the year, there were massive, deadly floods in Texas. This was the Brazos River in Richmond, Texas in 1913, very close to where I purchased my first home. People who claim that the weather would be cooler or less extreme at lower levels of CO2 have absolutely no clue what they're talking about. They're being fed a constant barrage of misinformation from government climate scientists, from their teachers, from the press, and from government officials. This needs to come to an end. 
very foolish decisions are being made entirely on misinformation. There is zero evidence that lowering CO2 levels would make the weather less extreme. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.